Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Photography Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 7. I uh, hope you guys are well. Uh, all five of us are here this week and a little surprise, there may be a sixth joining us shortly, but he's running a little late because he's doing a workshop. Uh, that, that could be a clue. Who could say? Stuart McLennan. Anyway. Um, uh, Way to build up the suspense. <laughs> I know, I know. I just, he'll I probably, if he, if he joins us, he'll probably be in the thumbnail anyway. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm not doing Mystery Man again. No, right, uh, right. Mystery Man thumbnail. Although, why not? I hope you guys like our new thumbnails. We're trying to get a bit more traction. So, like, if uh, if 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 at the beginning, if Dave could say something like "you tart" to um, uh, to Sam, uh, it'd be my pleasure. <laughs> you well, then, tart, Sam. Sam, I want you to look shocked. Right, that's the thumbnail. Brilliant. Okay. Um, <laughs> You know, works for everyone else, so why not do it ourselves? Um, we've got a little bit of admin to get through before we get started. Photo competition, Dave, 111 is it now? Yeah, it is. Um, it's going to be a nightmare judging it. Uh, we cl oh, we yes. close for entries at midnight on the 30th of uh, November, so not long to go if you've got any last minute autumn pictures to enter. Yeah, not long at all. So, um, yeah, and there, there are some say every week but there's some really good ones now you're not here next week are you Daz? no so no, we might no, have no. to hold that judging over to the week after um on that so we'll find something else to talk about next week and okay. then the week after we'll do the judging and give out the prizes for the photo competition um we've had a few comments which i thought we might go through someone got something in the background what do you mean what it sounds like there's some commentary going on in the background. No. No, is it you, buddy? It's probably Jan replaying the highlights of the yeah. Wales match and pissing herself laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will let everyone into a little secret rule on early tonight because I need to go and watch the England game. So. No, yeah. Um, Look, just prop your phone up. Just prop your phone up next to you. Well, You'll I've actually got, I've got what? a second screen here. Well, there you so go. I, I, might, I might just put there the... You go. I can't go too long because... You know, I'll get I'll get moaned out otherwise. Um, anyway, we right, feel a bit so rushed tonight. We all rushed yeah. to get on the. Did early you notice that the intro? The, exactly. Yeah, the intro no was bang on was tonight, it was wasn't it? Straight in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he yeah. normally straight ums and ahs about what episode it is, but he had it down. <laughs> He's obviously researched that bit. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it all absolutely nailed down. I have. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> We, we've had a few comments um, which I thought I'd just bring up. Uh, one on the Facebook page from Paul Cooper who said, Great evenings listening. This is from last week or two weeks ago. So the only observation, it popped up on my podcast list last night and it's somewhat difficult to follow without the pictures. Um, it yeah. is, you know, we were looking at pictures. It is, but unfortunately, that's, that's the nature of the podcast. We kind of do it visually. So... I know there's people listening and I hope you can follow along. Um, but um, yeah. Uh, Tonight is going to be a nightmare then. Well, we're doing a bit of El Potty this week, um, but we will, what we'll do is we'll we'll talk about the pictures and I'll give them the, the categories of it and the, who took them. So if you want to follow along, you can just have a look. Or if you want to have a look afterwards, you can just have a look at which ones we were talking about at the time. Um, is that good, Jay? Good food? <coughs> Cheese. Yeah. Cheese. Oh, good. good. Lovely. What, what are you sucking Cheese on? Cheese bakes. No, he's Cheese. not sucking. He's crunching. Can you not hear him crunching? Yeah. Cheese bakes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's all right. It's more for Carry me to cut it. out later on. Oh, I had, I had a mince puff yesterday. <laughs> Has anyone had a mince? Has anyone had a mince puff? <laughs> oh, <laughs> they were amazing. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I'll let you into a little secret. Oh, really? I had, I had four <laughs> of them <laughs> at the same time. Uh, literally, yeah. Cool. I was only going to go for from? two. Where are they from, Daz? Come on, give us. They from Tesco's. Brand. Tesco's. Tesco's mince puffs. Yeah, I popped okay. into Tesco's to get um to get some beer, and Helen some flowers, and uh, and I thought, oh, I'll just I'll, I'll go and get something, you know, from the pastry counter. And there was four mince puffs. And so I once the they got lot. served, what did you get? <laughs> 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 a pan of chocolates. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, it had to be done. I know, I know it's, you know, not very politically correct. It's just a joke. No, just you'll joke. be cancelled soon. We'll have to cancel you. 
Yeah, yeah, I'll be gone. Um, Dave, what else Dave will be well ahead of you. <laughs> Dave, Dave will be cancelled way ahead of you, Gal. Oh, You're that, safe, mate. Yeah. I'm old school, me. I'll probably be the only one left. Yeah, Dave's your canary in a cage. If Dave's still here, mate, you know that you're safe. <laughs> That's so very true. Um, we, I got an email from uh, Dave Hamner, and he said, uh, if I remember correctly, last year you introduced us to Whamageddon. Uh, the idea uh, is not to hear Whams last Christmas until uh, from the 1st of December until the 24th of December. And he said, maybe you could bring it up again next podcast. Well, here we are. Is everyone going to play that this year? I think yeah. I already lost it. Mm -hmm. No, 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 because not the first yet. Oh, okay, fine. It's the, first, it's the first of December onwards. So, um, and if, if anyone, you know, if you guys decide to play it with us, then let us know how you got, you know, whammed. Because uh, it's always interesting. There's always some crazy way that it happens. I did, I got whammed two years ago. I think it was two, two or three years ago in a, in a, in a curry house in, in Caddington near where I live. And I'm like, that's the last bit of music I'd expect to, because you don't normally hear wham, do you, in a curry house? And I got, I got whammed. So yeah, that's it. So if someone can't play it deliberately and and and, and no. wham you out. You have to, no. you have to hear it. But that can be anywhere, as you say, in a restaurant, in a market stall, or you yeah. know, yeah, so, on, right, an on an if advert. If it's if it's not wham, so if it's a version of wham. So if it's a cover, that doesn't count. Right, okay. But, uh, yeah. That's yeah. that. Uh, okay, so what we've been up to? Any, I mean, we've been, been off for two weeks now. What we've been up to? Anything? I went up the lakes. Yes, you did, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, Dave. Yeah. yeah. I, How was it, that? It was wet. <laughs> uh, but because... Well, there's a surprise. I, I didn't bail because I didn't have to stay in a tent. It was an absolutely fabulous day. We, we had some really heavy squalls blowing through, but it also meant that we got some really dramatic light off the back of it. Uh, fantastic to meet Stuart. We hung out, had a really good chat, put the world to rights. Um, met another couple of interesting people as well that were on the workshop, so thoroughly enjoyed it. Bit crappy trying to get home with the traffic, but yeah, good. And I got Excellent. got one or two half decent images out of it, so I was very happy. Oh, good, good. These people, these other people, did they recognise you first or did they recognise Stuart first? Oh, they were already there when I pitched up. I was fashionably late, so... Uh, did they go, oh, Dave, Dave! They had no idea Dave who Riff. I was, no idea at know. all, no. I just did no chance then. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd done it with you, I'm not going to know who I am. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, I saw some of the photos. They look really good, mate. So, yeah. And I bet it was nice to have a chat with Stu. It was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially sort of, you know, out, out and about, but standing behind cameras as opposed to this sort of thing. So, yeah, I highly recommend it. I mean, the thing is, it was a beginner's workshop. Um, so, you know, I'd sort of said to him, look, I'm paying you for um, pointing me in the right direction, the, the, the good uh, compositions in this location. It was, for me, it was a location guide. Um, so, uh, but it was, it was just nice to be there with a the camera, not making a vlog, literally just enjoying the light conditions and dodging the showers. Great. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Anybody else been up to anything? You feeling better, Jamie? Yeah, do I look a better colour this week? Yeah, yeah. you look much better. That I liver better. is rocking and rolling this week, yeah, mate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I've been injecting myself with mince puffs. It works a treat. <laughs> <laughs> works to me, mate. Huh? <laughs> well, I've been, I've been taking advantage of a Black Friday deal this week, given it's Black Friday. Oh, yeah? Nothing, nothing photographically, though. Um, We've got a we've got the luxury, I guess you'd, you'd call it, that the government are investing in this full fiber, full fat broadband that's going around, and we've had it in our village for quite some time. But my contract ex doesn't expire until next Mar no, next May on what I've currently got, so I had to sort of leave it for now. But they knocked on the door and said, uh, oh, "We're doing a Black Friday deal. You can get six months free on your uh, on this full fat fiber broadband." So um, I thought, "All right, I'll have some of that." So I'm getting 200 meg of, of speed injected into the house in a week's time um, wow. on, a, on a full fat fibre deal. So yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that. So I have none more of this stuttering and 200 going on. 200 meg? 
200 meg. 200 yeah. meg of speed. <laughs> That's the minimum. Ooh. You get 200, 500, or 750, or something like that. So. I know, I know that you're super fast anyway, but yeah, it's this is big big news for me. You're getting 200 meg of speed injected. You must be buzzing. <laughs> dear, dear. Indeed, mate. <laughs> Indeed. Sorry. I'm hoping to get some broadband around about the time they finish HS2. <laughs> <laughs> Will you still be alive for that, though? <laughs> probably not. HS2 is probably about 200 years. I must it? admit, I'm getting to an age now where they have these projects, like they've just started building a tunnel between Denmark and Sweden via a, a German island, and... Uh, not German, uh, Germany and Denmark. And I, I watched this video about it and thought, oh, that looks fabulous. And then I thought, oh, I'll be dead by the time they finished it. And, and you know, I seriously, yeah, I'm getting to the point where I'm genuinely looking at these mega projects. Like they were talking about, oh yeah, there'll be a moon base with people living on it. And I thought, oh, I won't see that. Yeah, I don't think any of us will. All my pop-ups now are, you know, uh, do you want life insurance? You know, this kind of stuff. and. Have you thought about your retirement? So obviously everybody kind of knows like my age and, you know, so I, I do think now, crikey, yeah, you know, it's starting to hit home when you get bombarded every day with, yeah. uh, you know, have you planned for your funeral? Jesus. I, on the plus side, my car insurance is about 3p a month, so I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be bad. Can't be bad. Talking about cars, I was going to, I was going to say this when we were talking about what, what we're up to, what we've been up to. I had to take my car in for a service. You know that light that came on when we were coming back mm -hmm. from uh, the Lake yeah. District. It was a service. It was a service light, so it wasn't anything more than that. But I got. I managed to get a courtesy car for the for the day, and it was a two thousand and nine Astra, right? And I looked at it and thought, this car is. It's like it's got no like lane departure warning. It's got no start stop engine. It's got no rear cameras. It just felt like a proper car, and I, and I was going to say like maybe we could talk about this one day. But do you think that as things become more technologically advanced, they lose their soul? Because I felt so much. I just loved driving that car, even though it was sort of ten years old. It was such a more pleasurable experience. It felt sturdier, and it just felt nicer than driving my new one because of all the gadgets on it. And they're, just, and they're just annoyances. All of the gadgets they've got, except for the cameras are good, the parking cameras are good, but most of the things are just annoyances. They're just like, they think they're being technologically advanced, but they're just there to add another layer of crap into your experience. Yeah, definitely. I think things go wrong on them as well. So like, I don't trust, you know, when you have digital dashboards, mm. like, I don't, I don't like those. I'd rather have a needle. Um, yeah, and exactly. silly like iPads sticking up in the middle of your your thing yeah. your thing it's like you don't need that in there you, you know, give me give me a dial my my brother-in-law was a service manager for Audi for about 30 odd years uh, he stopped recently and when he started they used to fix things and sort of the last 10 years of his career they just took things out threw them away and put a new piece in a whole piece exactly. yeah they couldn't fix anything these days no but this is like I, i'm sure i'm sure dad you've said this before i don't know whether you said it on a podcast whether we were having a chat and you were saying there used to be days like in years gone by where you'd have like a sunday morning yeah and there'd be people under the bonnet of their car fiddling Always. about you can't do it now like my car do. developed a fault I, you, the only way you can tell what that fault is by plugging it in plugging it the only way you can it, plug yeah. it in is at the service center so you couldn't look at it and go, oh, it needs, you know, new distributor or spark plugs or whatever. You've got no idea. The only way you can do it is drive it in and have them look at it. And like you say, they'll take out a module, go, oh, no, that's had it. Take that out, put a new one in, and off you go. Reprogram the computer, and it just I feels a bit soulless. I think I said to you, I don't, again, I can't remember because we talked about so much on the podcast and off the podcast, but I saw this... Um, camper van at the motorhome show a little while ago oh and it was incredible and if i won the lottery i would buy it it was absolutely fantastic this thing but they had a few kind of gadgets on it like i just thought that it you've just kind of got a bit too far like it's anything like the side door because it was a mercedes sprinter so the side door but you literally just pulled the handle but then it automatically slid across and locked itself into place and I just thought that's just something else to go wrong. I can yeah. I can live with just shutting the side door. I don't need that element 
to, to, to be no. electric, you know. And I just, there was a few things on there. And I just thought, you know, if you was, because this van was meant to be lived in off grid. And I just thought, you know, if you was living in this off grid somewhere and that door wouldn't close for some reason, then what do you do? I don't know. I just, I like, I, I like, I like a few gadgets, but I also like old school, you know, things that mm. things that are important for me, keep them manual. Well, the, the one thing I will say about this car is I drive an automatic and this car was a manual and I got in it and I was like, oh my God, I love a manual. It's like you can drop down a gear and, you know, boot it. But then I spent like three minutes in a queue and I'm like, I hate manuals. I just want an automatic back. I hate that, like fiddling about with a clutch. Oh. Did it? Did it have a dab back. radio from back then? It did. Wow. It did, but I didn't. I didn't actually realise it did. So I'm sitting there going, "I'm stuck on Radio One because I can't be bothered to work out how the dial is." When I took my daughter to school the next morning, she went, "What are you doing? It's that." It's... So it says it actually says dab on it, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I just feel like such... God. I feel so <laughs> old. But yeah, it did have dab, but I bet it was one of the very early ones. Because it was all dials and it was it had the screen, but it wasn't a touch screen or and there was nowhere to plug in an MP3 player or your phone or anything like that. It was just dab radio and that's it. It's a cool car though. It was a very nice car. Excellent. So that's good. Then we've all <laughs> we've wrapped that one up. Right. Well, thanks ever so much for watching. We're an hour early. Well, Stuart, I can switch um, off now. That was Stuart earlier texting yeah. just to say he's having problems with his headphones. So it looks like he is kind of sitting behind a PC somewhere, just okay. can't connect at the moment. So, oh well, okay, well, well that builds it up a bit, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Coming soon, coming, coming, soon. coming soon, Stuart McLennan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like that Alan Partridge one where he was going to interview Noel Gallagher and he never turned up. Do you remember that? And he just got I rid didn't of all see of that his. One. I love it was like Alan Partridge. I think it was Children in Need or something. And he was just like they had, they had all these other guests on who weren't, who weren't real guests, obviously they were like actors. And he was just get trying like well anyway thanks very much you know we've, we've got Noel Gallagher coming on you can clear off and then in the end Noel Gallagher can make it I think it was Noel Gallagher or was it Roger Moore <laughs> anyway <laughs> they're interchangeable aren't they I think it was Roger Moore yeah, I think it was Roger Moore I think it was Roger Moore I think he did interview Noel yeah. Gallagher oh anyway I'm a font of knowledge you are <laughs> So you started off at quite a lick, and we've just gone down a siding, haven't we? Yeah. Let's be fair. <laughs> we have, yeah, we have, yeah. Right, that's uh, favourite service station off the list. That's uh, TV program off the list. <laughs> Who put that Good. on their favourite service station? Uh, yeah, I can tell odd. you. Would you like me to tell you that is from? Uh, that was a good one. Uh, uh, oh, here you go. It's Ken Powell. Ken Powell. Oh, I Which thought it was one of you guys. No, 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 no it's Ken Powell is a, is a, is a reader, uh, a viewer, a watcher, a listener. Because I just thought, people. where did that come from? <laughs> I yeah, thought, no. I've never seen that in the topic section at all. No, and it's Ken caught, Powell. Oh, right, okay, that caught me right But it hot, was actually. specific to going out to do photography, though, so... Oh, yeah, it wasn't just in general, mm. it was just when you're on a photography trip like well i've got an answer for that and yeah, that's team based services we've all got that it's the same one isn't it i think everyone's going to trust amazing yeah. Yeah. that is yeah. worth going well, out on the first services. date it's the it's same version services. of it yeah oh. i don't mind there's one there's one just outside telford i think it is on the m54 heading into wales and i don't mind that one it's not a brilliant service station or anything i just i just got a bit of a fondness for it because I just feel like I'm halfway there when I go past it or when I go in it. So I can't remember what that one is. Though. Somewhere, it's just, I think it's Telford. Yeah. There's a garage on the outskirts of Carnarvon where I pick up sausage rolls on my way to rid the. It's about all I can oh. come up with. That, that can count as well. That can what definitely was, count. We'd probably say the worst one, can't we? Sorry. What's the worst one? <laughs> the one that we stopped in, was it, on the way back? Oh, from, uh, the lakes? That, what a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where was that? That was on the A1, wasn't it? Oh, I told no, you not to stop no, there. The no, it was on the M1. Uh, the M6. It the M6. Yeah, it's, the, it's the one that's got the tower. What is, yeah. yeah. The, oh, the Lancaster the South. Oh, Lancaster. Yeah. Used to be yeah. called oh. Thornton. Yeah. Used to be called Fort yeah, Knox. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, it is. I stopped there on my way back from Waswater last weekend. Yeah. Uh, and funnily enough, I was waiting around for a cheeseburger, thinking to myself, my God, what a dump. It's yes, listed, it's all, yeah. Is it? Think, is it? Yeah, I think it's listed. Yeah, 
It's a, it's a, a burger. Famous no, <laughs> the tower. It's that oh, that burger was so old. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the sixties. It was an Art Deco burger. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Tebay. Han Hannah and I have stayed at Tebay quite a few times. When, when we lived down south, whenever we'd go up to Scotland, if we didn't feel like doing it in one day, we just stayed at a hotel at Tebay. It was just really convenient, and uh, I highly recommend it for anyone who needs to stop off on the way somewhere. Well, it just it's not like a normal service is it, it doesn't yeah. have a mcdonald's or anything like that it's got a proper like little cafe in there where you with the stuff's in you know the old trays like going for your school lunch that steak and ale pie that i had on the way back from our scotland trip was fabulous yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. do love a farm shop mm. lots of time for a farm shop i like spending seven pounds on a loaf of bread <laughs> Yeah, but it's artisan. It's artisan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which means it doesn't last as long, basically. Anyway, shall we get on to... Um, so, so we've actually answered that question. Is that well, what you that say to Beth, off. Gary? It, it, just imagine it. Oh, it didn't last yeah. long because I'm artisan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I should be listed. Um, uh, yes, um, I was thinking about jokes to do with erections and buildings there, but I won't. Um, shall we move on to um, El Potty, shall we? Because we said uh, a couple of weeks ago we were going to... What's going what, on with Stuart's headphones, what, by the way? I mean, well, I'm saying, have we got... A, have we got should we talk about something else just to give Stuart another 10 minutes to... Yes, all right then. Let's let's talk about something else. Uh, let's, what's we could do Room 101, won't we, Jay? <laughs> no, sod off. <laughs> Bloody room. And, and this stupid thing about TV hosting rubbish. Who put that in? <laughs> God almighty, there's some that, that, crap topics. That was Daz. No, it uh, wasn't. It was you. Oh, did it, did I put that in? <laughs> yes. Well, that sounds like I one of yours. I, yeah. I know oh, it does. I come up with some crap, and I can't even remember half the time. So, what was what, what was my what was my good topic then? What did I come up with? What did I say? What your topic was? Uh, if you could st if you could have your own TV program excluding photography what would you like to present oh uh, i think i might have just heard that somewhere i thought oh yeah i'll throw that in that kind okay. of actually wasn't one of mine that was something that i heard and i just threw it in there i haven't uh, given that no thought either so we'll, we'll I, I, i've one. got an answer for that oh go on then Dave. well it would be a, sort of like a a program where you have a room full of foreign people who are trying to learn english and they're all from different nationalities and you get points for the dirtiest innuendos and the most terrible <laughs> misogynistic and racist cliches and i would compare it italian's good for that <laughs> isn't it Itali italian's got some yeah <laughs> what was that what was that that tv channel nuts you could have that on nuts tv couldn't you do you remember nuts tv that had like topless darts and all that sort of stuff and why just or is that out of my imagination I'm sure there was a Nuts TV. I'm sure there was. when I was a student. Oh, when I was a student, nuts. we used to watch Nuts TV. I'm sure we did. Can't remember. There was a program though. I, I, another one that could be out of my imagination. If anyone remembers this, you know, please let me know. There was a program. Oh, hello. Oh, oh. oh. oh almost. Oh, <laughs> so close. No, so <laughs> close, but <laughs> so close. Oh. There was a program anyway, right? <laughs> Which was, they, they got a load of different nationalities of people and they gave them problems to solve. I don't think they knew that they were, they knew that they were being given the problem. So for instance, they'd have like a, they'd have a, a like they'd all be on holiday and they'd put them on a, a, like a bus or something and the bus would break down and they would see how the different nationalities dealt with those issues. And it's really weird because different nationalities deal with things in different ways. Um, I could have made that up but i'm sure i watched it so didn't they wonder why there was cameras and a big furry sausage and you know somebody with headphones no on? the furry sausage was a different one that was a, that was your that was came with your burger that came with the mince puffs <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. no i'm sure that was, i'm sure that was a program i'm sure but they must have known they were on telly well i think it was all hidden cameras ah okay so and they might have been they might have been told they were doing something under a different premise so they might have been told that they were doing a documentary for something or another 
but actually what they did is they just presented them with a load of different problems and it's like you know the japanese cleaned the bus and the you know the americans ordered food and someone else did something else and it, but it was just like how different nationalities dealt with it in different ways i was gonna like go and the italians did that but I can't, that's so stereotypical i'm i'm gonna aim to get kicked off before you do Dave. um but yeah i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure i watched that if anyone watched that program i seem to recall part of it was on a river but that's all i've got um yeah so are we waiting for Stu now again? <laughs> no, tell us more about this bus, mate. This is uh, <laughs> this is Has fascinating. Any, anyone else? What else got... No, what else do you remember, Gal? Because you, you seem to. <laughs> did you eat a lot of cheese back in the eighties? <laughs> I ate a lot of everything back in the eighties. <laughs> to be fair, uh, no, I, I, I'm sure that's. A I don't remember near enough any of the programmes that you remember. No, I know. You don't, obviously don't remember Topless Darts. Topless Darts? Eric yeah. Bristow? No, no, no. no it, it was female Topless Darts. Oh, male Topless Darts. <laughs> God, no, it was female Topless Darts. I'm sure it was Nuts TV. I'm sure it was. <laughs> and they had Topless Weather Girls as well. A bit of a theme, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That was a uni thing, though. That wasn't like a, you know... Anyway, um, uh, what, what, what anybody would want to present anything? What, what TV shows? Has anyone thought of any? I mean, Jamie, well, you must have. Topless darts now. Ja Jamie must have. He's full of ideas. Uh, yeah, reckon. I've got no ideas on that. Well, it was a stupid question, whoever put it in. <laughs> I've got one. Oh, go on, Sam. Go on, Sam. Sam. Yeah, I, I, well, I always used to want to present a really wild show. Mm. And actually, that was an ambition of mine once when I did my edited a degree in biology and i wanted to be a you know like on the on the really really wild show because i think i can probably if i was going to try and communicate any to to anyone i think that's probably the sort of age level which i can communicate to um and sort of trying to explain animals and playing about with bugs and that sort of stuff was right up my street so yeah i always fancied doing that so it'd be like a scottish steve irwin yeah, with my broad Scottish accent, though, they would never understand the word I was saying. So, <laughs> so it is the question, mm. though. Would could I present something, but actually, but actually know what I'm talking about, or do I have to present it with my brain? <laughs> well, have you, I've seen a lot of presenters, and I think you could probably wing it. No, because I, 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 I would love to present the sky at night, but I, I wouldn't have a clue what all the constellations are. You could just make it up. Make it up. Yeah, okay. make it up. This is your moment now, Dads, right? You are presenting the sky at night. Talk us through what we're looking at at the moment. Well, it's very black and there's a lot of space up there. Yeah. <laughs> but all the points of light you can see, apart from the planets are stars oh mm. do you think that's why it's called space because <laughs> there's a lot of space okay. well there is a, there is a lot of space yeah but no yeah i think i always think oh i'm really jealous of people that are just kind of can store all this knowledge i mean if i don't i can learn something and be quite good at it and if i don't apply it for a few months it just it goes couldn't you do like a carpentry one yeah like a carpentry well, show yeah but it wouldn't be very interesting was it if i'm on a sky at night <laughs> you could knock <laughs> up a telescope <laughs> i could knock up a cabinet <laughs> <laughs> or a telescope <laughs> no wooden telescope oh galileo 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 yeah if i had, if i had the brain for it something like the sky at night something like brian cox oh good. yeah fantastic i think you're more patrick ball than brian cox yeah games master Hmm? Games Master. Games Master. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that. What's Games Master? Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore used to do Games oh, Master. Mm. Yeah, legend, wasn't he? Patrick Moore. Have you seen that show at the moment called Britain's something handmade? Talent? Talent? No, handmade builder thing. Where they build they're, they're all carpenters. Mm. And they make stuff out of wood every week. It's a bit like Great British Bake Off, but with wood. Great British wood off. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. It's all right once they get going. <laughs> I 
I see I'm out of the, uh, the celebrity sweep as well. Babatunde. Oh, yeah, went. Babatunde's gone. It's gone. Yeah, it's oh, I've not yeah. watched it for a couple of days, but. Oh, yeah. Babatunde's gone. Yeah. He's gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're still left in there. Gio. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Dave with Matt Hancock. Oh no, what were you? You were you were you were what were you Matt Hancock? No, I don't we know. gave him Owen. I don't watch we it. gave him Are oh, you still in? Because we gave him Owen. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. I reckon Owen's gonna win it. I've started watching it by the way. After you guys told me about it, I've managed yeah. to sort of Sorry, Sam. Remove a few brain cells and I started watching so, it. So you think <laughs> Owen might win it? Yeah. Just remind no, me think... it was fifty quid each in the sweep, <laughs> as I recall. <laughs> Let's see if he wins it or not. Let's see if he wins it or not before we um, you know, decide. So, what should we talk about next? Well, yeah, we might just <laughs> apologise to everyone that's watching and listening because it's really not our fault we're not talking anything with photography. It's that the Stuart. Yeah, it's all Stuart's and his fault. dodgy headphones. Do you reckon he's gone off to Curry's to buy some? some I reckon he has, it? yeah. Because he came on, I don't know if it's going to be it's going to be in. I'll probably cut it in anyway. But he came on for like thirty seconds with a Fuji film thing instead of his face, and went, "I'll be back in a minute." And that was, uh, yeah, about fifteen minutes ago. So we've been filling, haven't we? We've, but it's been yeah, great. No one's noticed. Filling. No one's noticed we've been filling. No. Yeah, no one's noticed at all. We um, could do what we're drinking. What we're drinking tonight, then? Oh yeah, Ooh. let's do what we're just, drinking. Just, just refilled. Uh, hog, a hog question goblin. Jamie can answer. IPA, yeah, I've just refilled. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like this one. Yeah, yeah. Hobgoblin IPA in a look at this in a proper hobgoblin glass. Look at me, all branded Ooh. up. Yeah, where'd you steal nice. that from? It came in a box with a, with a beer. Oh. It was a special gift set thing. Okay. Cheers. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hey. oh he is. <laughs> Honestly, do you know what it was? It was the USB cable. I had everything connected up properly. It was just the USB cable. Uh, I swapped it out and it's fine now. So there you go. So I do apologise. I'm wanting to watch the football probably as much as you lot. So uh, that's all right. Don't worry. We'll we'll be done before then. Definitely. Dave said he Dave said he, he really didn't enjoy basketball. Eh? <laughs> 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 I tried my best. I tried my best. <laughs> it must have been, it must have been difficult for you though, Stu, when the, the other two people recognised Dave before you, because he was saying about that as well. Well, he's a star, isn't he? So you know, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave, just getting him into trouble. Anyway, literally, we were we we weren't filling or anything. Uh, we were we were literally just about to move on to landscape talk for the year, but now you're here. What well, perfect timing, you know, because we were we weren't filling. Um, so um yeah so we're going to talk about landscape tour for the year now actually should we before we talk about that should we talk about the question about other competitions because i'm pretty sure one of us here and I'm, i think you'll find it's not difficult to guess which one um won won an award in one of these other competitions so um <laughs> yes yeah, so we've had a we've had a question um a question in from uh <laughs> where is it uh from stephen darlington and he says, do you think photography competitions are worth entering anymore? And if so, which ones would you enter? So, Stuart, are there any that you would recommend? <laughs> uh, apologies if I'm a bit rushed here. <laughs> um, <laughs> what would I recommend to enter? Um, I mean, it, it, it depends what your, your motivations are for doing it, really. Um, I mean, the one that you were just mentioning about that... Um, that I'd won an award in, I'd highly recommend that one, to be honest, um, purely because the the judging process in it is, well, verily, very, very, very heavily scrutinised and it's all very transparent. And they give mm. feedback as well to, uh, to entrances, how they've done and where the judges have rated them and all that sort of stuff. So the, the Natural Landscape Photograph uh, Photography Awards that's just been, I'd highly recommend that. Um, I, I mean, I don't enter that many competitions, to be honest with you. So it's hard to sort of say. Well, h hold that thought for a minute, Stu. Mm -hmm. So, in term, hold that thought for a minute. So, in terms of um, uh, that competition and, and El Potty, um, what is the, the cost to enter that? Uh, the natural landscape one is a, a little bit more expensive, I think. Uh, I think I entered about. 
I think it was like a set of 12 images, something like that. And I, I think it cost about 60 quid, maybe something like that. So it's not, it's not the cheapest by any stretch. Because um, what's El Potty? Is that 25 quid for 10? Yeah, they do it in bundles. I think you pay, if you, if you enter like 20 images, I think it costs about 35 quid. Right. Um, but you can, I think you can enter pretty much as many as you like in El Potty. That's been kind of the bugbear over the years since they removed the cap on it that, you know, you can, if you wanted to enter 200 images in El Potty, you can now. You just buy as many bundles as you want. I think the other one, I might be wrong here, but I think the other one, I think they possibly put a cap on how many you can put in as well. Right. Right. Yeah, because you entered about 200 a year. You got something, didn't you, Dave? Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Law of averages. Put enough in, you've got to win something, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd... Be I'd before... We, oh, go on, go oh, sorry, I was just going to say, I was, I, was gonna say I, I would absolutely second Stuart's recommendation for the Natural Landscape Photography Awards because I, I have actually entered it the last couple of years. I, I didn't win it, but congratulations, Stuart. You, you, your image oh, really you. was, was amazing. Well done, mate. Um, but they do they they give you like they give you all the feedback on your images and it's it's brilliant because you can see how the judges have have um, ranked each of your your images um, so it's really nice to get that get that feedback and you can see the stages which it, it got to um, which you don't normally because a lot of competitions you enter you just don't hear anything well if you, you might get shortlisted but then you don't hear it you know why your image didn't go further so it's quite nice to get that from that and it's also it's a nice competition because their focus is on a specific type of processing which isn't over processed which um i think a lot of the competitions now sometimes when i look at the the winners i look at them and i think well you know i wouldn't end up you know my images aren't that type of style of processing so it's not it's not going to go anywhere but the natural landscape photography awards is more suitable for photographers who are more sort of naturalistic in their processing style so it, it is a really well done and the images were all fantastic in it do, do you think you have to be like not lucky i think you have to strike it a little bit lucky though with with what you put in because it seems to me that every year there's a sort of a trend and if that trend is is popular you do okay so for instance the, the natural landscape was had a little look through i don't know i'm not sure whether there's single images and portfolios aren't there there were some mm. people there were portfolio winners and a lot of the portfolio winners were quite, I'm going to say abstract. They were quite sort of yeah. abstract style images. And I wonder if, if I'm not saying they weren't good because they were good, but I'm, I'm wondering if maybe someone looked and put through a series of really good images, but in a slightly old dated style, well, if you, you know, it look... was maybe a bit last year, yeah. you know, they, they just were unlucky. If you look at the judges as well, so, so uh, the judges of that, competition um i know one of them was theo bosboom who's very much um abstract type yeah. photography close-up photography so i think it just it depends on the judges i, I guess mm. uh, i w what i would say to that though gary is that um they do have a very varied panel of judges mm. and the judge <laughs> let's just say the people on it have sort of been there done that got the t-shirt um yeah. And as a result, I know from um, talking to one of the judges, you know, sort of behind the scenes and sort of roughly sort of what they're looking at and the the sort of more classical landscapes that you'll see from honeypot locations in that competition anyway, they just don't wash at all. Um, mm. I put a, uh, two or three images in that um, were from more sort of recognisable um, locations in you know what I would consider to be you know pretty amazing conditions and they didn't go anywhere in it they were just because you could see the judges ratings on and I think what they do is they just the, the and I, I totally agree with this to be honest is that if you're putting in locate honeypot location type images then the bar to get through with that type of image should be right up here because yeah, of course. you know mm. it, it has yeah. to be absolutely exceptional yeah. for it to get through in that type of competition yeah. and i think what they probably do is they just they, they look at probably a lot of a lot of those type of more classical images from recognizable places and they'll they'll just sort of bin them immediately to be honest it's yeah. quite a harsh way of looking at it but yeah. um i think their ethos around that competition is, is pretty sort of ruthless in that they just want to get mm. the absolute 
best of the best of what they can do with it. Do you know what I mean? There's no sort of agenda as to which images they need to put through. Do you know what I mean? Which perhaps is the yeah. case with other competitions. Well, I was going to say this year is is weird because landscape photographer of the year. There's so many more honeypot shots than I've ever seen before. So it, it, it mm. you know, it, it's it's kind of a bit of a main. Maybe the, the guys at the natural landscape want to sort of set themselves apart a little bit from from El Potty and so they've sort of said well we're because you're right I mean honeypot shots are are, are like that for a reason but oh, if, yeah. but because they're easy not easy but because they're they're well, well the known easier, they're easier yeah they exactly because they're well known you've got to have a really exceptional one to stand out I guess yeah um, it, yeah. yeah so the other you have the opposite of the extreme which was um uh, so Scottish Landscape Photographer of the Year, which I know is quite a controversial mm. competition, but um, last time they ran, they actually banned um, honeypot locations completely. <laughs> so, um, How won't, do they define that, though? Did they provide a list of excluded they locations? Yeah, they did. They yeah, did. they did. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the reasoning they said was that, you know, they'll have hundreds of photos of Luskentire Beach, which they'll have to wade through and they'll all be the same. Um, but I think, you know, I think it's... I think they oh. took it to the other extreme, though. They went yeah. too far with that, do you know what I mean? There's got to be a, a middle ground with that, do you know? Because the, the, the problem with that is that they they put this big, long list out of barred locations that you couldn't enter from. And the the question that came back from that straight away was, what if you're some poor photographer that's actually based in one of those locations, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm based in the Lake District. If you, you had a competition where, well, we're not going to accept any pictures from the Lake District because yeah. it's all a honeypot location, you'd be, you'd be a bit stuck. <laughs> well, also, if you take, like, a completely different image of a honeypot that's not been taken before, exactly. there's a skill in that. Yeah, that, that's it, yeah, yeah um, exactly. What I would say, though, with that, um, the, going back to the natural landscape one, is that um, when the when they did the win, when they got the email for the, the winning awards and stuff, the, we did a Zoom call uh, with all the sort of people who won all the prizes and stuff. And um, talking to Tim Parkin, who's one of the founders in it, he was saying that the perhaps what you're seeing with the types of images that got through is probably more reflective of the nationalities of people entering. It, it's a world worldwide comp, but he was saying that he said roughly about 70. 75% of the entries are from the US. So I okay. think mm. I think it's yet to sort of really take off in the UK. It, there's a lot of European entries, but I don't think there's that, actually that many UK-based photographers that, that entered it. So you probably won't see that many sort of classic Lake District or wherever uh, UK-based uh, images in there because I just don't think they've got that many UK entries. Mm. What were you going to say, Jamie? No, I was, just, I was just going to ask a question. Going back to the national, lands, uh, the national natural ones, uh, you were saying that they, you can add in a portfolio as well as single images. So, do they take into account the portfolio as a body of work, and do they therefore judge your pictures on a body of work rather than singular images? Because that's more reflective of the yeah. skill of a photographer that can pull a body of work together. Yeah, there's there's two there's two. So what they do is they when you're entering, you can enter a specific portfolio from a, you know, and it's got to have a, I think what they do is they ask for like a, a written sort of few paragraphs of, to, to explain the portfolio that you're putting in. So it gives it a bit of a uh, bit more background. And then they, they actually say that there's no kind of limit to how many images you put in. But what they actually say is that it, they recommend don't don't put too many in because it can actually count against you if you put 15, 20 images in, in a portfolio, they actually kind of steer you towards maybe putting five, six, seven images in. Um, but the, so that's a, a, like a portfolio specific section, but then what they also do is, because I didn't enter that, I just entered sort of, uh, I think 20 or 15, something like that, single images. Uh, if you score high enough on those single images, what they do is they put you through to a, a sort of overall prize and depending on how many points you get across those images, you then sort of go forward in it. So I think I got through to like the last, I think it was like the last 39 or something like that for the single images accumulated together. Um, so I think I had like six images or something like that. And then there must have been on some sort of points basis. And then whoever gets highest amount of points wins basically. 
Yeah. So I I had um I think four images shortlisted and had them we obviously didn't get through to the final final stage but they were a sort of penultimate stage but I didn't enter the portfolio thing but all of the images which were shortlisted were put into a portfolio yeah. and you were given yeah. a score for your portfolio um, okay. which was actually really interesting because actually my scores for the portfolio were higher than some of the scores I got for some of the individual images um, probably yeah because they third... see it all as a collection don't they yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I had five. Mm. I had five images. Was it no? Maybe six images held back. I think uh, put through, and I just said, if it's only six, don't bother. So I just went through them. I just pulled them out. I just said, you know what? No, <laughs> keep the money. It's fine. I'm not interested. So yeah. I must. I'm going to enter something next year. I didn't. I, I entered. I've only entered it. I entered El Potty. I think it was once might have been twice i don't think so i think it was only once and i haven't i didn't enter last year um or the year before but i must be I've, I've collected some reasonable images actually and i and the more i look at these competitions the more i might think Do you know what actually i think i might enter that one i might enter that one so yeah i think when when do they when when's the entrance open a for april now is, is it, it? yeah so yeah Jan so january april. to april the El yeah. i said to you though darren last time i seen you i you should have put that panel that you took in from home pal. I printed that the other day. I mean that honestly, I'm not kidding. That's one of the best home file images I've ever seen, and I, I, it would be a crying shame to you not to put that in something like El Potty. Yeah, because it's absolutely. I will, I will, I will enter that. But yeah, it was funny the other day. I just thought, you know, that image I've never printed it, and I want, I want to get that printed quite large. <clears throat> and I printed it on a, uh, on a, on a a burrito paper and i printed it on a on a, on a matte paper as well mm. and um they've come out totally different i mean i had to edit them totally different anyway for the papers but the on the matte paper it's a very muted almost like a watercolor feel and i really like it i was going and to I say put, i would have thought it would have looked better on a on a matte paper that one yeah yeah so. I'm cutting all that praise that, that uh, Scrooge has given him. <laughs> That's not going in, so don't worry about that. Unless I can somehow make it say your photos were shit. Yeah. Uh, it's not going in. I was going to say on El Potty, I put in, I put in several. Uh, I've done it for about three years now, and I keep sending them to Dave to put in. I had a really good one of the church in the sea in black and white, and it didn't get anywhere, Dave said. He said it, it didn't do any good. No, it so, bombed, mate. It bombed that yeah, photo. It, yeah, yeah. We all voted against it, Gal. Yeah. You missed nothing. Did you not put that one in this year that, that when you know when you fell in the sea and you, your camera went under the water, but you still managed to get the church in the sea above? Did you not put that one I in? Did. Sure I did. I saw it. I did. Yes, I did. It was, uh, oh, you it did. was okay. half. Half GoPro, half camera. That one. That's the one. Yeah. yeah that yeah. was that was the what that was the one image when I looked at all the old potty. That was kind of the one that stood out to me. That um, mm. slightly underwater. I thought it was brilliant. Image, well, so. Shall we have a little look through? Shall we? I'll share the screen and we can have a little chat. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're just going to go through a few of the old potty ones because we promised we would a couple of weeks ago, and and just stop me as I scroll down. If there's any you see, we'll go. Yes, Daz. Can I just go for a wee and get no, a beer? No, mate, you ain't got time to go for a wee. Yeah, You've only got... got 40 minutes. <laughs> Plenty of time. Hurry up. Run. Wee quickly. I'm going to go as well. You can't go, Sam. No. <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> I'm missing the build-up. I'm even missing well, the build-up. I never miss. Going. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, let's start. Let's start with the winning images and the, and the things. Let's have a look at this. This was the overall winner. So... This is um, this is Will Davis um, or Davies Brecon in winter. What do we think to this one then? I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we're not going to we're not going to sit and critique and say, oh, you know, this is amazing, and that, you know, we're not going to like rip anything apart and take much time over it. But I will say it's a, a really nice image. But I do think there's better ones that didn't win. Personally, I, I think mm. most of us are going to say that really you know because yeah. it is we, it's the old thing we always say it photography is subjective and i wouldn't have chose this as the winning winning image myself but it is it is a it is a lovely image not it's got lovely colors in it nice layers in it and there's nothing to dislike about it i think no, it's, no, a, not at all. it's a great yeah, image yeah i think the key is 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 as you say we'd probably all 
probably save that but but then we probably all choose a different image as our favorite and it's the same thing yeah. i guess where you have a panel of judges yeah, absolutely. it's, it's yeah. the, the team yeah. sort of score so as, yeah. as we'll find out in in a couple of weeks time i guess when we when we pick our winners from the guys that i mean the, i mean the guys who've entered our competition much higher standard than this how much did we say? charge the guys to enter our competition 25 pound an image that was excellent um, well yeah. done yeah. no sorry so no 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 shit it was free <laughs> Was Sorry, it? it was free, Daz. Yeah, we didn't charge him anything. <clears throat> Rubbish. Yeah. yeah. Why did I pay you 50 free. quid to put my image in and go? <laughs> Sucker. Yeah. Uh, okay, so are there any others that anybody sort of looks at as I scroll yeah, through? Yeah, I, I just want to yeah. say, can, can I just say that one of Felix Doe is yes. exactly why I suggested we all go to Felix Doe, because I always thought it would be a really interesting location to spend the day. I must admit it, that is a nice image. I do like that. It doesn't do a lot for me, but it is a it is a lovely image. I bet that would look really good at night, with everything lit up, and if you could light the foreground. I mean, it looks good now. I'm not certainly you know, um, Kevin Williams, very good Kevin Williams. But I'm just I bet it would also look very good at night with everything lit up. It doesn't do anything for me personally. Sorry, Kevin, but it doesn't. Uh, he's not watching he's not watching no. anyone no, real is, for it, again, not it's, watching. it's a lovely image I, I really like yeah. it I think because I'm drawn to landscape photos you know well I know it's a landscape photo but you know kind of more more the fells and mountains and stuff but yeah I'll tell you something aren't they making Rubik's cubes big these days <laughs> Jesus <laughs> and complicated <laughs> I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to work that one out guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, moving on. You know, yeah, what's that, on that, the one at the top, top right, gal? The, this it, one. Yeah. Well, weirdly. See, look I at think, that. See, now for me, real. we're talking winners straight away. I'm thinking, yeah, that'd be a contender for me. I think I've it got, was I, Dave. Who, go on, go on, I've Steve, got to be careful what I say here because he's he's uh, one of the best photography mates. Demi comes on tricks with me. No, that's a lovely image. There, really nice mm. image. Well done, Dave. Who, who took that? Uh, Demi. Demi yeah. Demi Oral. Oral. <laughs> I'm Unpo sure unfortunate around. surname, but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that yeah. is beautiful. That is... Um, I must admit, when I first saw that, I thought if I was a judge, that would have been the overall winner. Yeah. Uh, at a glance, yeah. I thought this is far superior to the one that was the overall winner in the end. Well, it was interesting. I think you said, Dave, this is the one that made the front cover or the the main image on the times when they were displaying the winners it did oh, no. so the, the the times picture editor obviously had his pick of the images that he was going to feature when they did the announcement and this was the banner image and it, it was interesting the the other images that they used to illustrate the article um and they put the overall winner at the bottom as an afterthought saying and this was the overall winner uh, and i was quite surprised at that but clearly you know they'll they'll publish whatever they choose to publish but that was the picture editor's choice and i would give him i would give him the award just for climbing up there because i've been up there and i was sick <laughs> <laughs> and i actually stopped for a slightly further down and said i was up there with, a, with a, another guy and i said look i'm really happy with where i am i think this is the best composition but it was actually because I was going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's interesting. We were talking earlier on, wasn't it, about honeypots and you know taking a different view on them. And, and this particular composition is is well taken, I guess. I've never been there personally, but I've seen it lots of times. But the yeah, fact yeah. that all of a sudden the con the conditions that this photographer got on that t on that day and that time were just sublime. He's created a really unique shot in a composition that's been seen many many times. So it just proves the point, doesn't it, that honeypots in, in themselves maybe create a composition that, that works, mm. but everything, all the elements have got to come together to really elevate yeah. that com composition. Yeah. Which is what do you think of it, Stu? Sorry, after me. Yeah, yeah, what do you think of it? What do I think of it? I mean, I think it's a great image. It's pretty much what uh, Jamie's saying there is that, you know, the, the bar's got to be very, very high for a, a shot like that because it's so often photographed. But this is a good example of that where, you know, the, the conditions are so incredible that um, you get something that's really unique. And, that, you know, I mean, 
have no issue at all with them putting the honey pot shot through in a comp like that if if it's like that. Um, mm. But that should be, I think, applied across all of those locations. And the criticism it gets sometimes that competition is that they'll they'll pick something like this and then they'll put a fairly mediocre image of another honey pot there. I mean, they've done it in this competition this year. Put a mm. you know fairly mediocre image of another honey pot, and you think, well, why have they put that through? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Yep, agreed on that. Uh, okay, I I really I really like this one. I thought yep. it was really good. That's my uh, favourite. Like yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know where that is. Is that the dark hedges? Perhaps I don't I don't know. Um, it's it. I think it's it, I think it is because the the guy who took it's um, Irish, I believe. Uh, Paul Killing. Paul so. Killing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that in Belfast? Is that the one that's in? Is it Belfast? Is that the, I don't know the, where, the, where, is, where they use like the Game of Thrones? It was Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah they used it in Game of Thrones. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, it maybe just could have done a little bit more work on a faster shot of speed just to have frozen those birds. No, <laughs> I that don't think no, he I was do. going <laughs> birds, was Come he? on, mate. <laughs> I like what the birds are getting anyway. That was obviously a joke. That, that was obviously a joke. Well, you like my yeah. photography. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I saw a photo, oh, no, sorry, I'm going off road, but I saw a photo today. Um, it was an astrophotography photo of the galactic core. Right, so you need like a really long exposure, even a tracked uh, exposure, to, to get like the galactic core. Mm. And there was a bird flying through it, <laughs> and I just thought, my <laughs> God! Yeah, but the, the, the bird was like the silhouette of the bird was really sharp, and I just thought that was so cool to have that bird fly in and just stay there for about thirty <laughs> seconds and then just fly off again. Yeah, not move like that. Yeah, and move with the tracking as well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, just on the right amount. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that was a good one. There is one. There's. There's. Oh, actually, we'll carry on looking down. If there's anyone wants to just, just stop sorry, me on these winners, just go back to the top a minute, Gary, because that that one of the, the yeah. youth one, I think, the youth winner, that's very similar to one that you took, Daz, isn't it? You've got a shot similar to this. At Wind was it Wind? Yeah. Or wherever you yeah. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, it, yeah, no, to be fair, this is Darren Knight, age 14. Just <laughs> <laughs> won this one, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on, Daz. And three quarters. Uh, yeah, well done on that one, Daz. Um, yeah, no, no, Natasha Burns, well done, Natasha Burns. Um, that's my James, that's my hang on a minute, Natasha Burns. Oh. James Burns. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's lovely, mate. That he really is Natasha nice. of the weekends, isn't he, James? Um, anyway. <laughs> Let's have a look through. Any stop me anywhere, and we can. Uh, yeah, what's yeah. that one that looks like the bridge on the right hand side above the? This one. Yeah. This is uh this is Damien Waters. Damien Waters. Damien he's a Waters YouTuber, is... isn't he? Yeah, he's a YouTuber, isn't he? Damien mm. Waters. Yeah, that's so. nice. Mm. That's nice. Is he the guy from Liverpool, Damien Waters? Yeah, oh, dream photography. Yeah. Yeah, he, I, I quite enjoyed watching a lot of his stuff. I think, I think Dave, we did on that video where we first introduced the world to Darren. So I did there. I think <laughs> Damien Waters. We mentioned him on that. One. We did, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's nice. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Um, good, good, crunchy things again. Oh, there. What is going on there? <laughs> Is there some static? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, so we'll have a quick we'll have a quick browse through classic view. Uh, yeah. Stop me if there's any that you like the look of. Um, Top middle. I love that shot. The birds. This one. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I think it? that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Really, really lovely that. <clears throat> yeah, that is good. Yeah, that is good. I guess there would have been a temptation to maybe like clone some of those but as it's in classic view uh mm. that is as it is so yeah, yeah that's 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 very nice um let's have a look further down any stop me if you see any uh, okay yeah. go go to the the, like the, the tree on the, on the central tree with looks like the um what is it the, lav la lav the lavender yeah <clears throat> you see see i wouldn't have chose that because I don't know. I, I, I've seen. I mean, I, I, that's is that snow? 
that's been that ploughed or something. Oh, I think it's is plastic. No. Yeah, it's, it's plastic. plastic. Is it plastic? It, it says Josh Cooper, oh, it and then be the, snow. the title is snow. Plastic Fantastic. Right. So I'd assume that's plastic. Yeah. But then you see, maybe that's why it was picked, because it's something different. Because of that plastic, and, the, and he's using that to give all those, you know, give that sort of geometric look. Doesn't do no, much for me, that. No, no that's, me, I'm, me I'm just thinking it, it's, no, no. it's just something that, I don't know, you you see, that's quite a common shot, isn't it? A tree with lavender, you know, kind of got rows of lavender going up. So, yeah, I don't know, perhaps I'm being a bit harsh, but yeah, it didn't, it almost no. jumped out at me for, for not being anything yeah exciting sorry okay. mm. sorry right. um, I think you like the one below it he won't be watching he won't be watching this one yeah that one yeah yeah that's yeah. very nice that's Mick yeah. Doherty S what Slufter's Mist that's really nice I, I'd imagine is that Scotland is that Scotland would you say it's hard to tell, isn't it? It could be anywhere, that. Yeah. But anywhere. it looks Scottish, doesn't it? Jersey it looks... bog. Yeah, could be. It looks... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that's... that's. I've been there. Uh, I actually shot that in better conditions, but didn't enter it. And I do believe that's Scotland. Um, nice. Just off the A82. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. If you look carefully, you can see Jamie in the, in the distance leading a tour group. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> umbrella up. Yeah, yeah. How was that? Did you, you went to you went to Home Fen, didn't you? And and uh, I did. Went off with yeah. a, a few bots. Well, I didn't go How off with that? them. I, I just bumped into them, and it was a foggy morning, so I took the took them round to where some of the decent compositions were on a foggy morning. I didn't get paid for them. Oh. They were just you know oh. colleagues and friends. Didn't get an and stuff, invite so I either. It. I noticed. Well, I, I, I yeah. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, that was a good one. This one. Uh, which I wanted to pick what? out. Oh, this is this is Stevington Windmill, which is about ooh, not very far from my house. About mm. uh, twenty five minutes from my house. This is Amasud, isn't it? Mm. He's got coupling. Um, this I really like that one. Um, they he's, were a, growing he's a good some photographer. He is. he is a good yeah. photographer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were growing sunflowers um, in they this were. field um, not long ago uh, to attract people in. But that's good. I really like that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yep, yeah, well done on that one. Uh, go 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 um, above the one above that gal. This one. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. is uh, that's Penmon, Penmon, yeah. and I guess that's what's that called? Bioluminescent. Yeah. Um, algae, isn't it? One of the best yeah. things that, I've ever that, done was. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was going to say that that's another one where I mean, it's, I'm sure it's like a lovely thing to see. I'm pretty sure that's been in a couple of times in previous books. That sort of image. From the same spot, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that that is one of the problems, though. I find with this, there are there was one that uh, not long ago that they had two consecutive books, and they both had almost the exact same image. It was something from the Peak District. It was like a some zigzaggy um, like uh, a walls with some sheep in it, and it, and it was in winter, and they were almost identical. And I remember looking, going, well. That's been picked again. I thought it was the same image. It wasn't, but it was very similar. Chrome, Chrome Hill in the Peak District. Yeah. Yeah, that that's the one. Ah, oh, there's my webcam gone. Um, right. Yeah, it's been in about four or five times in yeah. the last six years. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, there's actually another one from Chrome Hill um, in this, uh, which we'll have a look at. Uh, but sorry, just going back to that one from yeah. Penmont. You yeah. know, that to me, I think that would make a a, a great print. I can see people. I mean, well, Stuart might disagree because obviously, you know, he knows what sells. But um, you know, for what me, in, that, you think that would make a good selling print? I don't know if it'd be a high selling print, but I can understand how that would appeal to people to buy. I mean, I, yeah. I really like it. I would. Uh, mm. I'd be quite happy to hang that on my wall. Mm. Is that too dark to sell, Stu? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's it's one of those that a bit like sort of astrophotography in that they you get people that are quite interested in, you know, it's quite unique and that sort of. But it, it as a as a thing that you'll put on your wall, it's it, it would be a tough sell, I reckon. That's something yeah. like that. Uh, you'd have to be very invested in that type of. 
photography for that to really sort of be a seller, I think. And you, you know, I don't think there'd be that many people that. No. You know, no, I suppose you know because I mean? I, you know I, I you know I do like I mean I used to do the astrophotography, so I quite like them kind of shots. So you're right, I'm probably kind of invested in that style of photography. So that's what appeals to me. Yeah, oh. very nice though. Oh yeah. Uh, there's Trevan for you, Dave. One for you. Yeah, actually, to be fair, I quite like that one. So do I. Uh, so do I. It's it's one of those compositions that, as you know, is one of my bet noirs, but. Um, They've pulled it off rather magnificently, and I can see why it did well. See, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm the opposite. I really don't like it. Do you know that's just that's just my taste. So yeah, I'm afraid not. But um, it's just it's just I don't like that sort of processing. So, but that's just me. I did like it. I have to say, I did. I did really like that one. Not that not that anything I say counts, but I did like that one. Um, okay, moving on swiftly on because we've only got twenty minutes before the football starts. I Can thought I, I might take you up there, Gary, when you're up in a couple of weeks. Yes, that would be an excellent idea. If you're I up for that location, there. yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Yes, I would. Mm. I'd really like to go up there. Ah, oh, now this one, I'm putting this one up. Hang on, hang on, once I'm putting this one up because uh, Peter Nichols actually commented and said, "I hope you'll be nice. Uh, I hope you'll be nice about my image that got in, and this is his image." and this is Chrome Hill and Parkhouse Hill, unless I'm very much mistaken. Uh, again, but this is clearly a drone shot, I'd imagine. I don't think you can get a ladder um, that high. But yeah, well done. I, I really like it, Peter. So yeah. What is not to like about that yeah. photo? I've, yeah, exactly. It's, it's a great photo. I'm yeah. very proud of that. I actually had had one very similar to this uh, from a very similar position, but it was all cloud inverted. Uh, all through the valley but i didn't put it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're gonna hate me i i'm i'm not that much of a fan of that image to be honest oh you're not uh, no i just just because it's not that there's anything particularly wrong with the image it's just that i've seen it so many times and the 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 snowy sort of shot from chrome hill has been in the book so many times that it's it's just becoming a you know the certain photographers have been entering it for a long time it, it's become a bit of a running joke that park house in the snow is going to be in the book and it's a night it, listen it's a lovely take of it there's nothing wrong particularly with that image i just it, it's just because i've seen it so often in that book i just you can get a bit image blind to it do you know what i mean uh this was a topic that i put into the group and we haven't and i just i think i said my my question was are landscape photographers the best judges of photos? And I think what Stuart's saying is, is, is because Stuart obviously is a professional photographer, so he kind of knows what sells, he knows what to take. And now I've not seen this photo, or if I have, it hasn't registered. So this is really new yeah. for me. So I'm looking at this almost like for the first time. And, that, and if if you are, then that's obviously, you know, totally valid. And if you haven't seen, and, and that's kind of where I think the the competition has different aims, perhaps, to what us photographers want it to be, because they're they're very much trying to market it as a sort of this is the best of Britain, and here's some nice views. And you know, if you're a a, a sort of casual fan of photography who's not that invested in it you'll probably look at this like you're saying for the first time or whatever and go oh god that's amazing you know what i mean yeah um mm. but if you've been entering it for quite a few a lot of years and you've seen this image five six times now it's the criticism will be well have we not moved on from this or are we or, or is it just going to is, is it going to keep happening you know what I mean? so it's a lovely image yeah. i just i've yeah. seen it so many times you know what i mean don't don't worry peter he's not on next week um, <laughs> you wanted me to be honest <laughs> no that's good no that is really good we do want you to be honest so um yeah so i thought there was some some really good ones are there any others you guys want to look at really quickly there's one that i really like in urban life okay and it's slightly left field because it's not really my sort of thing that i shoot right right at the think? bottom yeah the boys are back in town yeah, you see, I looked at this and, and I really like this one as well. Um, I shot, a, and I, this can take, sound like I'm taking a piss now. I shot a very similar one in Cambridge. Um, no, I did shoot a very similar one in Cambridge. Did you enter it? 
under four I didn't enter it, no. No, I actually had five people in mine, uh, which, you know, apparently odd numbers are always better. But no, the, it, it is an excellent shot. It is, a, it is a, yeah, I do like that. It's a good street. It's a good, it's a good street sort of yeah, uh, like scene that. there, isn't it? So, yeah, mine was probably a bit better. Um, but, you know. No, I'm only, I'm only joking. Well done. Uh, I'll stay Fieldhouse. I recognise that name. I'm See a good, I'm good mate lot. with Dave. Yeah, really yeah. good photographer, yeah. Yeah, I see him an awful lot on um, on Twitter. So, yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah. I had five in mine. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no. They, they, that actually, there's some quite good ones in this one. I don't mind uh, some of these at all. I really like that one, actually. I think that's really interesting. Um just a, just a really interesting shot um probably doesn't do a lot for anyone else but i just i just i like that decay um i think that was really good no it doesn't do yeah. anything for me that you know what i don't care i had one very similar <laughs> i had one very similar to that uh, no, i quite like i quite like that yeah i like it yeah, yeah. i quite like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i just think it's somewhat a bit different and i, I do like different so yeah um anyway there, there are lots of does anyone else want to look at any of the others while we're here um does anyone know, want to pick out any particular what in urban life in, or in any of them i know it's yeah, in the black we'll and white section the yeah the, yeah there's a commended shot of the of the thornham boathouse or coal house whatever it is yes uh, with a yes. boat and i was yeah. really surprised with that because you know for, for us locals around here that is a honeypot and it's well taken, but uh, you know I don't want to be overcritical. Sorry, Alan. But it, it, for me, it doesn't. It's, it's not the best shot I've seen of Thornham of Thornham Boathouse. That's a, no, that is a very very uh, standard composition. It is, yeah. Of that, and I think, and I, I'm literally not taking a Mickey now. I think I have one that's almost exactly the same as that composition wise. Yeah, I have as well. Uh, yeah, color yeah. version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've got, mine's got a lovely red sky. <laughs> oh yeah, my well, I, I've saturated. got a shot. Yeah. I'm on the other side of the coal shed. Yeah, with lightning in mine. You yeah, that's that a great well. shot. That one. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one. Well. That's a really good yeah. shot. But yeah, I mean, you know, don't mean to be disrespectful for this because it is really well processed and it's it's a lovely shot. But mm. it is quite a, a standard. It's, it's just an easy shot, isn't it? Put it bluntly, yeah. it's quite an easy shot to take. So, well, th yeah. this is this is what I'm talking about in that, you know, I think everyone would agree that pretty much 99% of anything that's in this book, it's it's come up to a certain standard where you can you can never say that any of them are sort of bad images. They're all composed yeah. well mm. and processed well. It's just that, like you're saying there, this you know I don't know this location, but it, you're saying it's a fairly standard shot from that location. That's the kind of thing that if you if 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 a competition market in itself as like the leading landscape photography competition in the UK the bar has to be a lot higher for a, a sort of standard shot of a location mm. like that do you know what I mean yeah. and it, yeah. you know like you're saying it's, it's fairly yeah. sort of all right image isn't it you shouldn't yeah. have all right images getting through in a competition like that no I, no. I don't think no that's true that's, that's that's very true but then I guess you know it's subjective isn't it you know people will judge what they're going to judge but i agree with you you know i agree with you Stu. i agree with you jamie uh, it's, a, it's a very standard shot that you take from that location so although you know, that boat is uh, no longer there of course so it's no no it isn't yeah it isn't it isn't what's the one uh, below it gal this one mm. this That's is nice. a mm. summer brook by kath goddard god god mm. god yeah yeah it's lovely yeah, i've seen follow some of her work on twitter it's, it's, she's produced several yeah. from here it's uh, really lovely yeah, yeah that's nice i like that mm. and the one yeah. below that as well was i think one of my favorites from the competition no. this one yeah 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 mm. but that's just Ian the, Mountford. the sort of image i like mm. yeah i could imagine you taking that oh thank you that's the sort of image you would take mm. it's the sort of image yeah. i try to take yeah <laughs> No, it's the sort of image you would take. You got, to, you know. I'm just fishing down. for compliments now, Gary. Thanks. Yeah, don't push yourself, yourself down. I, I love your work, Sam, and you're a very nice person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, there are some good ones it's in the black a, yeah, and white. There's some nice ones in there. There is. Yeah. What's I mean, over on the bottom what? left, Gal, that one. This one. Yeah. That is uh, Long Lane 
by Matthew James Turner. I, I know where that's taken. He, he's a local photographer to me. He's based in Carlisle, and he do, he he does a lot of quite heavily processed work, I would say. But his, his black and white stuff's really quite nice. This is this I think is one of the back streets in Carlisle, actually. Uh, okay. Yeah. You can is... tell it's up there because they haven't got um, any electricity. Look, if you look, at it's, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a gas lamp. Gas lamp. <laughs> 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 Yeah. And he can't he can't tell what time it was taken because the sun's gone down, um, so the uh, the sundials don't work. Yeah, no, that's nice though. That is a, a really nice shot. Yeah, that is a really nice shot as well. There were lots of. I mean, overall, I think I think overall there were lots of very nice images. Yeah, very good images this year compared to I would say last year. You know, I would say there were the, the work was better this year than it was last year. But um, yeah, I think so. But yeah, yeah I mean, totally get the point that there are there were an awful lot of of honeypot shots in there this year as well. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sh stop sharing the screen now, um, simply because I need to share the England game to myself in a minute. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, there were you know um, overall, I would I think I'd agree with everything everybody said. But the thing is, I think we got we got more excited about certain images than we did over the winner oh definitely yeah mm. that's, so always, nice... that's always the case though to be fair they, they, they pick the, the you know when the, the images come up to a certain standard you could pretty much pick a winner out of any of those and you know you'd get the same response wouldn't you you know people would have sort of mixed views on them mm. Mm. jamie so is Jamie, isn't Every it? Yeah, week. It. <laughs> How can I not <laughs> hear it? My <laughs> mic must be extra sensitive tonight because my cheesy crisps are going down like <laughs> like some sort of right. So what's the top? Right, it's seven. It's seven minutes to seven. So what's the predictions for tonight? Who's England playing? USA. Right. So what's the predictions? Well, Three one. Okay. To England. Yeah. That's coming from the Scotsman, by the way. So, you know, take it. <laughs> well, I'm going to predict that England are going to comfortably win about 4 0. Because I think Ooh. this England team's incredibly underrated. Incredibly underrated. Well, it's, it's good that he's not playing five at the back now, which helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. No one else really cares, unfortunately. <laughs> these like that give a toss about football. Oh, they're not non football. <laughs> yeah, none not of them really. really. Well, Dad, you were a football oh, fan. Dad. Mate, I was happened. a huge football fan for like decades. I was like so passionate about football. I really was. You know, I used to go to Highbury, go to the Emirates. I mean, I mean, when we lost the Euros in '96, I felt almost like suicidal the next day. I was just, I felt like my whole world had kind of crumbled. I, I was. But now, yeah, the last, I'll say, five years, I, I've got no interest whatsoever. It's really funny how I, I was so passionate for so long. Um, what, for, now, for just football in general or, or England yeah, specifically? Uh, well, uh, main, mainly for Arsenal, but, you know, but you know, I was obviously a big Arsenal fan, loved England, but, you know, I could name, like, so many players from all the different, you know, all the different teams as well, you know, going back in the day. And, uh, you know, I could name every single kind of Man United player and every Spurs player. And it, 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 But now, I don't think I could name two <laughs> players in the Arsenal team. Ridiculous. Yeah. I just don't know why. It just, uh, my, my passion for it just literally fell off a cliff one night and it's never, I just thought it will return one day and it, it never has. Bizarre. Same here. I, I used to watch football. I, you know, I've had season tickets and followed teams, but I, I last three or four years, it wasn't an instant thing. It's just dwindled, and I don't care now. No. Now, if you if you went back ten years and and said, you know, this is how I'd feel today, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't believe anybody because I was I watched all the games, every tournament. You know, I just. Uh, the World Cup was on. I'd watch teams, you know, outside of England and outside of our groups, and but yeah. Do you, know, do you know what I? I I'm I, I'm a big Liverpool fan, and I um, 
I'm fortunate I, I still get to, um, I wouldn't say a lot of the games, I get to a few of the games because me, me mate shouts me his season ticket when he can't go. But if I didn't go to the games, I think I might end up the other way, a bit like that, because I, I think a lot of people I know have said the same thing, they've just they've lost interest in it. And I think it's just the the sheer amount of money in the game now and the fact that there's just, you know, years ago you could, the fans were a lot more connected to the team because you could kind of relate to them a little bit, but they're so disconnected from the, the sort of modern average going fan, you know, players are earning hundreds of thousand pounds a week and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And like, I have to go to the games now to, to keep a bit of that connection because if I didn't go, I'd feel completely disconnected to it. Um, you know, I think I would lose interest in it quite quickly, to be honest. I think, you know, as well, because... Gary's you know, trying to wrap it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get up. Like, oh. <laughs> Gary's <laughs> desperate to wrap it up, yeah. You're doing the national anthem, for God's sake. Go on, <laughs> go on, then, if you want to go. Now, what I was going to say really quickly was is that I don't have that problem, you see, with the money, because I'm a Peterborough fan. So I can totally relate because our players are probably getting paid less than I am. Um, but um, yeah, no, I mean the national anthems have just come on. That's all. But I'm I saying, think that's why. That's why that's <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why I, I like the boxing so much because I'm yeah. not. Oh, because they get paid I'm, virtually I'm not, nothing. No, no, I'm not passionate about one particular boxer. Yeah. I, I, I like certain boxers, but I, I enjoy boxing more than I do boxers. Whereas I preferred Arsenal over football. So, is there any other competitions we want to review tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one going on in Qatar I'd quite like to review. <laughs> Go on then. Go on then. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is good. You'll have to come on again when we've gone for a bit longer. Um, you know, and not talk. And not, no, 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 it's not your fault. It, to be honest with you, we're normally on for a couple of hours, and I've cut it right down because I want to watch football. Yeah. But um, look, thank you ever so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you later. Bye. No, I mean, it, it, no, it's been, no, it's been, it's been great. Great having Stuart on. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm yeah. very sorry to Paul, uh, Paul Cooper, that we had to, you know, do some. Uh, do some more reviews of photos that you're not going to see on the podcast. Um, we'll be doing that again in two weeks. So, you know, I can only say sorry about that. Thank you for Stuart to come, for coming on. Really yeah, appreciate no, it. Yeah, no worries. Um, no problem. You know, it would have been nice if he, you know, bothered himself to have his shop open when we we're in the lakes. You know, but, you, know you wouldn't you know. have bought anything, you tight git. I know, I know. I know. You'd never buy I was just, I was looking at three or four images, oh. actually, that I was thinking about buying. Well, I'm, no. I'm up at Christmas. Yeah. I can't wait. I've got a week yeah. up there in Christmas. Are you? Oh, oh, nice, nice bit of snow. Well, we, we, we might get out for a shoot then, because I'm pretty quiet through that period. So give us a shout and we'll, oh, we'll get out. I will do, mate. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah lovely. Yeah. We'll carry this chat on offline. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, <it's, laughs> thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week. Uh, we'll be back next week. Darren won't be here next week. You're always welcome to come on next week if you want, Stuart. Uh, you know, you're more than welcome if, if you want because Daz is not here and, you know, we can have a, a bit of a longer chat about things. We won't force you to look at images. I'm no pressure, though. It's up to you. <laughs> I'll, uh, do it. I'll do it next week. I don't mind. I'm not I'm yeah. nothing going next week. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. There you go. There you go. You heard it here. Stuart's definitely on next week. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you all next time. Goodbye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. Thank you very much, everybody. Much appreciated. <laughs>